Welcome to Get the Net, a fishing podcast that takes a deep dive into competitive events, fishing news, tips, tactics, and most importantly, interviews with some of the most interesting and in-tuned anglers from Canada to the central U.S. We're leaving no stone unturned to bring you the most raw and authentic talk talk. My name is Jamie Bruce, and while my resume says bass, my frying pan says walleye, I'm no stranger to the multi-species realm. Whether you're puttering on tackle, driving the bus, cutting the grass, or killing time in a 9 to 5, I'll try to give you something in every episode to take with you on the water, or at the very least, bring you a few laughs. Alright, welcome back everyone. Been a little bit since the last one, not not a huge gap, but I was trying to actually line up Tommy Wood, my Aussie buddy, just uh, just lit up the Barra Tour and spent some time in the boat with him this year on the... He was a co-angler in the opens, but they uh, live in an upside down world with time zones and it was hard to line up. So uh, we got delayed a little bit, but we're back tonight. We got Joe Cooper and I think he's got Perrick with them even. They're at the Northwest Angle. They just got off the ice, ice fishing. Cooper's an absolute beauty. He lives on the, lives on a damn peninsula down there surrounded by Canada and Lake of the Woods. And he's on one small little piece of Murica. So it's kind of like ice fishing heaven and he's a guide down there and we've had him on the show before he's uh he's funny as it gets and has lots of good stories so we'll uh we'll get his take on a few things uh, on the ice fishing front been at her a little bit around here i think i fished a total of four hours this year uh two different occasions got a couple lube tube videos done if you haven't checked those out ones uh using live scope perspective to fish for shallow water brook trout and the others running the old clack attack for uh for walleye so I'm, uh, I'm packing up all my gear right now. I'm going to head to the camp for the weekend and and go on a full ice fishing vision quest, just solo and check new water out and should be uh, should be fun. I missed a lot of ice fishing last year doing the opens and I know I gripe on it all the time, but I actually really do enjoy it. I love checking out new water. Um, so I'm going to be doing lots of that this winter. And kind of an exciting day on the bass fishing front for me. As you know, I, uh, I missed the Bassmaster Elite Series last year after doing all nine of the Bass Opens, finished five spots out. Um, and then this year, you know, we've got a, got a young angler on the way and, uh, you know, work and all the, all the other realities. So there's no way I'm going to be able to do nine tournaments again, but I, uh, I kind of been looking into the nation series a little bit, talk to, uh, talked to hank weldon and gl at bassmaster and kind of got the skinny and um yeah i ended up getting into a bass nation regional qualifier on lake eufaula alabama first week of february so pretty excited about that the top 20 from that 250 boat tournament goes to the national championship whoever wins the national championship gets an elite series berth and a bassmaster classic berth and I think second and third go to the classic too. So we're going to have a few chances at the classic this year, especially fishing the three Northern opens and just that little carrot of the elite series. I mean, you got to beat 450, <laughs> you're fishing against 400 and well, more than that. You're pretty much fishing against like 1200 people by the time you throw the clubs in and the couple hundred boat derbies, uh, for one spot. But I'm the kind of person that kind of needs that little carrot just, to just to keep on the grind. Um, you know, such an outside chance, but just that little, little glimmer of hope's all it takes to, uh, to get my ass out of bed and, and on the water. So really looking forward to that. Uh, going to pick up a new truck camper. I'm getting from four wheel campers. I'll, uh, I'll get into more of that a little later once, uh, once I have her, but I'll be like a damn bass fishing hermit for a week. Another vision quest. Uh, before we get the boys on here, Got reminded to check out Strike Master Ice Augers. If you watch my walleye video, you'll actually see my auger head fall off my auger, 24 volt. Uh, I didn't check the bolt. Check your auger bolts, no matter what brand you, you run at the beginning of the year, especially if you use a snow machine mount because they're just rattling around like crazy. Uh, but anyway, it popped off, ran the damn thing over, and I just threw a pin in there and salvaged my ice fishing trip. But there's a reason the full-time guide's up here and, you know, We've been using Strike Master forever. Not that I'm a full-time guide anymore, but, um, you know, it's all about durability on the ice. Everyone's got stories of ice hoggers breaking down. I've probably got more than most from the old gas days, but now we're styling on the Strike Master. Check those out at Lake of the Woods Sports. And a reminder about top shelf distillers. 
it's uh, an Ontario company, you know, local boozing company, a uh, bunch of cool different kinds of moonshine and Irish cream and whiskey and whatever, whatever you fancy. I'm uh, I'm more of a beer guy, but I'll dabble into my Irish cream once in a while, but there's all kinds of stuff on there. Lots of good gifts. If you have someone that's impossible to buy for or already has everything, uh, there's a couple, you know, sample packs and cool different kinds of moonshine and everything like that. Uh, if you are going to check it out, use the link down in the bio. That's how the podcast is supported. Any purchase there helps keep the the podcast alive. So a couple of Christmas cocktails for your guests or a gift, check out Top Shelf Distillers. Link is in the bio and you'll see the ad here, but got to remind you about Nordic Point Lodge. Really great place. Lots of big shakeups this year. They've gone to all catch and release, uh, really proactive initiative. A lot of these camps that are just straight meat monglers, um, you know, you'll just see the fishing decline over, over the years. I've worked at them before. And when you do find a tourist camp with a conservation policy, um, you're styling. Check out nordicpointlodge.com or follow the link in the description below. And if you got any ice fishing planned, if you didn't watch my uh, last lube tube video, take a look at the clack shots. It works. That's almost all I use. Put it on the 13 wicked pro medium light we got a bunch of new clock shots in stock they usually go pretty quick the crew gets on them around here pretty heavy you're going to want to put those to work on lake winnipeg too those walleyes aren't just going to eat uh hard pieces of plastic forever and if you're looking for another ice fishing destination this year you want to circle something on the map check out the wabagoon chain and dryden ontario a uh, really great place to go ice fishing i mentioned it on here before i've been there i grew up there Lots of different options, magnum crappies, big walleyes, surrounding lakes have unbelievable lake trout fishing. I'm really hoping to weasel up there in the coming weeks. And uh, don't forget to check out the tagged fish contest. I'll link that below as well. May as well get a few doneros for your efforts. And that's enough of me rambling. We'll, uh, we'll pull on these wild childs currently at the Northwest Angle. This outdoor content has been brought to you in part by Nordic Point Lodge. Located in Northwestern Ontario, Nordic Point Lodge offers some of the finest fishing Canada has to offer. Whether you're looking for a family-friendly getaway or a corporate retreat, Nordic Point Lodge has you covered. They offer a luxury outdoor experience with five-star service. Check out the description below for more information. BT Fishing is a northern-born, small-town tackle brand. Focusing on innovating rather than imitating, BT has left a mark on all levels of competitive fishing from walleye tournaments all the way to the Bassmaster Classic. The full BT lineup is comprised of innovative tackle, carefully crafted using the highest quality components. Check out the Smeltinator Jig, Elite Marabou Jig, Crusher Jig, Clack Shot, Clean Jig, Smeltinator Under Spin It More at sportsheadquarters.ca. We ship across Canada and the U.S. Use promo code GETTHENET for 10% off all products in the BT lineup. He's sneaky <laughs> like that. <laughs> What's going on, you meat mongrel? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> you were late tonight because you said that you had to clean walleyes. You're not going to get enough walleye cleaning in the next three or four <laughs> months? Oh, man. Two bucks a fish. I should just quit everything else and clean fish. Just straight set up shop and... I used to, so like I used to clean so many and I'd make good, like there'd be nights I'd make like five, 600 bucks just cleaning fish. But, um, but I hated it at that time because we didn't have as many guys working and we were just like, it was when Red Fox was really starting to get busy. And, um, you know, I'd, I'd have to do like three, three trips with the bomber in the, in the morning, like three trips out to get everyone out, three trips in at the end of the day. So it's like, I've, been working 14 hours and and now I got to clean fish for the next three hours and and now we don't have to do those extra trips and everything and I wouldn't mind cleaning fish like I'm done earlier now than I used to be but now nobody asks me to do it anymore because they could tell how much I hated it before <laughs> would you be a contender in the Winnipeg ice fishing show fish cleaning challenge 
Maybe. I don't know. I don't know if I'm that. I don't know. I feel like it takes me like one, like a couple limits for me to really like get sliding through them quickly. But I know I usually figured I could make when I was charging a buck a fish, I figured I could do like a fish a minute. But that's uh, that's nowhere near what the Winnipeg ice fishing guys are at. But no, you'd be getting lopped. It'd be two to one. You know, it's, uh, you I guess, be like, my focus has always been just doing them, like, so it's a nice looking fillet and not, not so much speed. Oh, no, you I can't mean. have that. <laughs> <laughs> Do you I, use an electric fillet knife or are you too cool for electric? I, I use a, uh, just a regular knife. I used to use an electric some, but when you're doing like, you know, a hundred fish or something, or you, you end up messing around with the electric a little bit cleaning it and you know you got to get the scales out from between the blades and whatever and you you get a, you get good with a regular blade and you don't have to sharpen it too often once you figure out how to maneuver it without working against it hmm. i think did the main thing today, with like a regular working? blade what's that were you when you're set up out there today were you like were you working or were you just fun fishing no, I'm working. I'm working. I, I don't even really fish much um, when I'm working for Red Fox. Like right now, you know, getting houses pulled out off of shore onto the ice. Um, I'm checking, checking ice thickness further out. Our houses are just between Young's Bay and Flag Island right now. Um, and so I'm, I'm like staking trails, getting trails set up and checking the ice at the same time. Then we got kind of a weather change, so I'm like keeping an eye on cracks. And I went out south of Flag today, and there's you know a lot of a lot of checking to do there because you don't know exactly where you know what what piece of ice froze at what time. Whereas that section from Young's Bay to Flag, like you can look out from shore and see there's a couple open spots there, you know, to, that you got to watch out for once you start getting out there and um. I know that stuff froze the day I pu pulled my boat out of the water. So that was like November 19th. And um, the stuff south of Flag, like Little Traverse Bay and out that way, I, I don't even know when that froze, sometime after that. And Big Traverse Bay still has open water. Um, really? Just south of Garden. And, and where there is ice on the main part of the basin, it's, it's less than a week old. It's got to be. So... Um, it's not much ice out there but hmm. yeah that big traverse portion you know the wind keeps it open yeah she's been gassing what's the uh what's the report like out of out of the angle how much are you looking at you got to do it in like your best minnesota accent too by the way if we're, <laughs> if we're talking ice reports <laughs> i don't know i mean do i just have a minnesota accent like on my own do i have to even it's try it now <laughs> it's getting thicker since I said it. Oh, the ice, you know, the ice the is day, thin. So I'll let She's... you know when you're catching your stride. I got to like flip on the movie Fargo for a little bit or something, but <laughs> uh, I don't know. The ice is like 10 inches for the most part where our houses are at. You get south of Flag, it's like uh, nine. The thinnest I saw was eight, but yeah. where our houses are, it's like good clear ice. And south of Flag, it's got about four or five inches of clear and then four or five inches of, you know, when we got that snow, whatever that was, like a week ago, we probably got about six inches of snow here at the angle. So, hmm. okay. So that white ice, you know, is usually you don't have to worry about it until spring, really. But with the temps we got coming up the next few weeks here, might be something we got to be careful of. So, yeah. Especially like if we get some rain tomorrow or something, all of a sudden that that top layer of the slush ice turns to crap and things can get interesting. What do you bomb all the guests out on? So it, we call them people haulers. <laughs> it's like a trailer. <laughs> <laughs> the meat wagon. <laughs> it's like a, they're pretty much, for the most part, kind of uh, the homemade trailers that just have a bench on each side, door in the back and um can fit you know once once there's good ice you can put like eight guys in it and we pull them around with either like a polaris ranger or 
the most popular thing is like geo trackers or Suzuki sidekicks. Yeah. So um, like today I pulled them out, little Suzuki sidekick. The thing's just a, it's like a see-through vehicle. There's so much rust and it's, you know, <laughs> it's a beater for sure. But uh, that thing's paid for itself. Like I don't even know how many times. So um, they're, they're good to use. They weigh like a four door Suzuki sidekick is only a couple hundred pounds more than a crew cab Ranger that has like the doors on it and stuff. Right. So that's the rig. That's the deal, man. You like, you go down to the South shore and those things are bombing around like golf carts on a golf course. And you got, <laughs> you know, you'll drive them as long as you can. Like as long as we don't get too much snow, you keep running them because they burn a, you know, fraction of what the bombers burn as far as gas and so we just keep running them until the drifts get too deep and you ask the people to hop out of the wagon and push you know you come to a stop in a drift and everybody has to get out and push it and then come running up to you when you can finally get it rolling and then you start going again and <laughs> well we've had you on on here before um but that was a couple of years ago so Remind everyone where you're at and what the hell you're doing. Um, yeah, so I, I live and guide at the Northwest Angle on Lake of the Woods. And um, I've been living here for like 15 years now or something. This is my 15th winter working for Red Fox ice fishing. Um, we've got uh, permanent houses out on the Minnesota side of the Northwest Angle. We've got 40 houses, 30... 34 day houses, five sleepers, and then our office shack. And then we got like um, five or six of the bombers, bombardiers that we haul people out in for the majority of the season. We leave at uh, sunrise or a little before sunrise and we stay out there all day, drop the people off. We got stuff we got to do, you know, moving houses, opening houses, going around, checking on people. You know, you you check on the houses maybe three times a day. Go around and check on the people you dropped off, and how's it going, guys? And usually you get like horse shit or a lot of little <laughs> ones. <laughs> a lot of little ones. How's everybody else doing? That's the thing is, every it's almost a guarantee. Every single house is going to ask, "How's everybody else doing? How's everybody else doing?" And it's like you you can walk up to a shack and they got just a pile of nice fish and. Wow, looks like you guys are doing good. Yeah, but how's everybody else doing? And it's like, why do you care? Look at this. Well, <laughs> if everybody if everybody has piles of fish like that, then we're just doing average. And I'm like, no, why can't you just be happy? Like, look at this. But well, they got a flex at the bar after. It's a ton of oh, yeah. yeah. Every day is a derby. Oh, yeah. That's the other thing. Is like, well, how many fish have you guys caught today? Do you think? And when they're out on the ice and I'm talking to them, they're like, I don't know, maybe 30, 40. And then you hear them in the bar and they're like, oh, yeah, we caught 100 today. You know, <laughs> the truth's like, somewhere in the middle. <laughs> Come on, man. Yeah. You can never you. get a straight answer. <laughs> low ball in you to make you feel shitty about your guiding ability. <laughs> Even though once a permie's out there, she's out. Like, you, you get what well, you get. Well, the grass is always green or somewhere else. And, and we do, you know, like, we work hard to make sure everybody's catching fish. Uh, that's not that, like, all the outfitters don't work hard, but... I feel like we're kind of unique in that if, if we got a bunch of people out there and there's like one or two houses that are doing noticeably worse than everyone else, we'll, we'll do everything we can to like get them in a different shack. Or if we have to, like if all the shacks are full, we'll, we'll have them sit in the bomber while we jack up the house and, and bump it around, you know, and we, we the houses never really sit in one spot for more than, you know, if, if a fish, if a house sat in one spot for seven days, that'd be a long time. So, right. Oh, that's good. That's rare. Rare for what yeah. kind of what I've seen. <laughs> We're pretty I've uh lucky. before, and it's just like <laughs> just like one, you know, one or two. The most I had out was two. And they were like one was down by Rope Island and one was on the west end. So there was no like you weren't checking <laughs> on them in the day. <laughs> yeah, try doing that in a bomber. Oh yeah. yeah. In yeah. anything, in a truck, you got to like drive back to Kenora and then book herself. It's like an hour and a half drive. But yeah, plow yeah, trucks. I mean, 
once like February had sat in and there's three feet of snow on either side, it's like, yeah, I would just break out the portables and kind of go around the structure. I'm like, oh my God, this is so much work. Ice guiding is, I don't know. I like, I did it different because I'd have the rentals once in a while and then it would just be like, you know, like just me and like a group of two to five people and like you're just giving her in the worst shittiest conditions and like oh my it was just torture like you'd break so much stuff oh yeah i got a couple good groups that just come at good times of the year now and we got a good milk run dialed but outside of that it was like some days it'd be down three augers oh man like the equipment you go through in the winter is and the thing is like i've broken everything every way possible to the point now that i've I've got a pretty, I don't break much stuff anymore, but it's still like, it still happens. But cause I, I do the, the snowmobile thing too. Like I do right. red Fox mostly December, January. And then I go and I, I do snowmobile trips like more late season, but, but, and, and that's where you really see, you know, shit hit the ceiling is like, you, you, you don't know who you're going to get these guys. Most of these guys aren't used to going more than a couple miles with their snowmobile and portable, you know, and they come pulling up and you see, they got their otter shack on 30 feet of rope behind their snowmobile. And you're, like, <laughs> <laughs> and you're like, okay, everybody just stay in my track. And you're going all of a sudden you look over and he's like, and this, the shack's like, <laughs> behind him. it's like, Oh my God. Auger in the sleigh. <laughs> Yeah, I was, they're one of my favorites. These guys bought like this clam shack off the showroom floor on the way up, so it didn't have all the poles in it, and it was really nice when they came up. So they left their helmets in their truck and came up. And it, the next, like that night, te- huge temperature drop, and the wind was blowing thirty mile an hour the next day. And they come out walking out of their cabins with the towels wrapped around their heads, like to stay warm. <laughs> I'm like, you better hope Border Patrol doesn't run into us or we're all done, you know? <laughs> we, they had this big cooler of pasta salad in their shack. And so just like I'm saying, they had it on a rope because they didn't buy the hitch. And the, it flipped on the way up. Well, the pasta salad was all over inside. So then we get, we finally get the shack set up and all these noodles and everything are frozen to the canvas. And as everything's warming up and the wind's whipping it, there's noodles falling down on them all day. And I'm just like... You guys deserve this, man. This is what you get. I'm sorry. But we, <laughs> hammer, we did hammer crappies that day. You know, that was back when Elder Bay was still fun and before uh, before there was planes and snow bears and barbecues. Yeah. There, but... there were a lot of bratwurst eaten there and a lot of crappies got killed. <laughs> yeah, man. It's, uh, you know, and... I knew, I knew it wasn't sustainable even then, but if I knew then what I know now about how, how, uh, easily, you know, diminished those schools can get, I, I would have quit doing it probably because that was something special, but, and I didn't nearly as much money as I should have, but we thought the opposite because we're only used to just fishing tiny little populations and tiny little lakes up here. And it's like, in a weekend they're done we're like how does outer keep pumping like it, just, it was years and years i was like this what is going on i remember there was one time like when i was working at flag island resort i estimated that just at flag island resort which was really where most of the people were going up there from it was like something like three thousand crappies that had been kept out of outer that weekend or that week or something and i was just like this is crazy man like it's not gonna last it's not, and, and the crazy thing is even there's guys even realize that what they're doing isn't sustainable, but it's the mentality is kind of like, well, if we don't keep them, somebody else is going to, you know, and it's just like, yeah, but yeah, yeah you live and learn, I guess. Firebag and I don't know. I shouldn't even say names. No, like that. I'm going to so, edit that out. I know. Getting That's the thing is guys are like, yeah, we went out to, and it's like, yeah, you can't just say you went and got your limited crappies. You got to say where you got them. Like, what's the point of that? But that, that was even, that was even crazier, you know? And, and Dave Winters kind of stumbled upon that when he was walleye fishing. And, um, and we, we tried our best to keep it under wraps. And of course, you know, there's some expert trackers around the angle, man. They'll find oh, your yeah. tracks. You could go out there in a helicopter and they'll find you. And, 
And, um, you know, you don't even realize how many are there when you're trying to keep it low key. And then all of a sudden the masses of people start showing up and you realize like, there's, there's millions of fish here. Like this is insane. <laughs> this is insane. I mean, it's like, you never would have guessed there was that many there because you're just trying to hide your tracks and only keep a few. And next thing you know, it's five years straight of a thousand fish a day coming off of one point. And you're like, it's crazy. Yeah. It's the craziest thing coming at it from Kenora. Cause you go like, once you hit rope, everything just tapers. There's just the, you know, people traveling to Windigo, but like the road narrows everything tapers and you don't see anyone for 20 miles and then you get down there and it's just a wall <laughs> a wall yeah, of even... shacks and oh. brat horse. <laughs> yeah you get guys pulling up is this is this fire firefox are we have firefox <laughs> you know, <it's> like... <laughs> oh my gosh yeah that's you know i did that this fall i decided to go like way over east to Obab or whatever and crappies. Quit, and quit name no drop in places. I'm gonna have to go through and freaking bleep. I want to make you do a little work. I don't know how else to say it, but it's just funny because like, like I go all the way over there. I leave from all. I was like, I've never done this in a boat before, but I was like, these guys are cool. Whatever, we'll go for an adventure. Leave from Oak Island, drive for like 30 miles. Don't see a single boat. Come around that last corner, and there's 27 <laughs> boats in there, and I'm like, what? Oh, there's like Texas registration, Nebraska, Alabama. I'm like, what is going on in here? You know, and, and then I start looking more carefully. Everybody's just bailing them in. I'm like, whatever, let's join them, I guess. You know, and... <laughs> man, in, in, uh, in KBI a few years ago, our starting spot was a legit 75 miles. No, no not even our starting spot, but that's we kind of fished our way down. And we're like, all right, we got to like, you know, we're going to have to make the full run today. Kind of panic mode. It was like day two or three. Don't same thing. Like don't see a boat for 30 miles. Wheel up to this cattail line. There's like, I'm like, there's a boat here. And it's like, you know, it's like an old, whatever freaking Astro turfed out crest liner. And they're hawking like huge, like pike. They're trying to catch pike like out in the grass in front of it. And we we're on the cattail line. And it was Illinois registration. And I was like, hey, guys, like, we just drove 75 miles to get here. We're in a tournament. Like, do you mind if we just slide up this grass line and we'll be out of your hair? Like, we're not going to get in your cast or anything. He's like, 75 miles? Boy, I just drove 750. And then they started <laughs> taking pictures of our motor number. <laughs> like, You're like, oh, he's got, he's got like, a point. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we caught a three pounder in front of him. Ooh, that was pretty good. That is, yeah, man. It's uh it's crazy what guys will do for some fish, you know. <laughs> when I saw that Texas registration, I was like, no way did they pull their boat across the freaking continent to come catch these. Like, what I what, what how many do you throw back even? Like, I don't even know. It was crazy. Man, the crazy part is like I spent all of last year in the southern u.s you know back yeah. and forth like saw saw it all got a little sample of it all there every single lake i've been to has the most disgusting populations of white and black crappie i've ever seen in my life more <laughs> num more numbers than ever especially texas i caught a three pounder on toledo bend oh my buddy from iowa was crushing him every day like filling up his live wall in practice like it was the best crappie fishing i've ever seen there were state planted brush piles that would literally have like over 214 to 16 plus inch crappies on them. And you can use like how many hooks on each line and how many lines. And it's like, there you, you wouldn't be able to keep up if you were like spider rigging <laughs> every, every single place we went, every bridge you go under, uh, there's guys sitting on five gallon pails, just filling their buckets up with crappies everywhere you go. Like we have the worst crappie. I don't, well, I don't know. You guys aren't really selling the crappies that hard anymore, are you? I mean, no, I don't think so. It's okay. We have we have the best ice fishing crappies. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but the worst overall. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's 
Oh, man. Well, it's because there's bald eagles here. You know, that's what they come here for. Yeah. Oh, look, an eagle. <laughs> yeah. We're in Canada now, aren't we? Part of the adventure, bud. You're like, no, it's a vulture. <laughs> yeah, it's a turkey vulture. <laughs> a red-headed eagle. <laughs> oh, what the hell else is going on? Not much, man. Just um, got got my new Polaris this week or last week, I guess. So I'm still kind of getting that thing rigged up. Yeah. And um, uh, had like uh, some different projects lined up for a few different things that end up postponing because we got no snow. You know, we're the only place in, in Minnesota with fishable ice, seems like. I guess there's some smaller lakes in central Minnesota, but nobody's got snow there's no snow you couldn't you take all the snow in the state you couldn't even build half an egg or something i don't know but it's um <laughs> it'd be a modest egg glue maybe but so it's pretty it's pretty dry out there i've been burning up high facts i don't know what else it's uh shaping up to be one of the busiest seasons i know for red fox and for myself ever that i mean we red fox had uh the busiest schedule lined up then like more more people in january than we had ever fished and now we had two other resorts that ran fish houses out of the angle here um closed down this winter and so there's just this massive uh rush of bookings here right last minute well one of them was announcing that they weren't going to be open this winter last year but then there's a different resort um, that just like a week ago or maybe two weeks ago now announced that they're not going to be open for the winter. And, you know, they had they had uh, pretty full books and suddenly all those people are scrambling to find somewhere to go. And we can't I mean, we can handle about 100, 100 people if we're able to, like, max out every hole in every house. We can do about a hundred, and and I think that's about all the lodges that we take people out from. That's about all the beds they got. So, um, and January is always our busiest, but this year we have more people in January alone than we did the entire uh, 2020, 2021 season or whatever. That yeah. no, this the twenty one twenty two. The second year of, that they tried to do the ice road and it got drifted in. Right. Yeah, that year. That year was brutal. Like, that was the slowest year I've ever seen. We got more people in January alone than that entire season. Man. So, I'm just... I, like, I get the draw. Like, it's freaking fun down there. We drive, you know, we drive... It's, like, whatever, 50 miles on the ice road just to go for dinner down there because it's, like... You, and the same thing. You, you won't pass a set of headlights for 50 miles if you go at yeah. night. And then it's just full full breach ice party. Everyone's pulling <laughs> pulling uh, pull tabs, cardboard cocaine they call them. Yeah, um, <laughs> yeah it's crazy. Really yeah, it's it's something else, man. And you and you should go another like twenty five miles just south of the garden sometime and look at that because we got nothing up here compared to that city. There's there's um. There's more people sleeping on Big Traverse Bay most nights than there is in Lake of the Woods County census. Like the population of Lake <laughs> of the Woods. There's I'm serious. Like you you start heading south from from four blocks, or you start heading south from Oak Island on a Friday or Saturday night in January, and the sky's glowing like you're pulling into Winnipeg or something. Like it's because all these ice castles, they all got LED lights on them now, and everybody's got light bars and it's insane, man. It's like um, you it's hard to really explain or even understand until you see it, especially if you have the chance to see it from the air. There's not one acre of Big Traverse Bay that doesn't get touched by a plowed road in a wheelhouse throughout the winter. They plow that road from Wheeler's Point all the way to Garden Island and they're leapfrogging the entire way. So there's one main road going straight towards Garden. And they just run branches of big rows of houses, like for two miles on either side of the main road. They just go straight out and they just every day they're plowing a new row out to the side going up and they just leapfrog their way all the way to garden. 
and they're usually there by like the end of January and they haven't missed one inch in between Wheeler's Point and Garden. <laughs> like, Just plow the whole lake off. <laughs> yeah, and it's like <laughs> – it's like the mentality is you got to be at the end of the road. Just drive to the end of the road. That's where you're at because it's, you know, they, they flood the end of the road with houses and then the, the bite is good for like two days and then there's nothing left and it's, and then they just push out like another half mile, <sighs> nothing left, like combining the lake. <laughs> there isn't a sauger like those, those 12 inch saugers don't stand a chance. They're getting crushed. Help me. <laughs> They're so good. Oh gosh, those saugers. Mm. Sog dogs. Do you Sog think people, dogs. I bet you everyone would still be there if the fishing sucked? Yeah, because even when it's at its worst here, it's still better than anywhere else. What's like the next craziest place in Minnesota? Like that gets is it like not, not leech or anything, eh? I mean, maybe Red Lake, like right now. Right now. Yeah, for like Red Lake for like two weeks. But other than that. I mean, there isn't a, a a lake in Minnesota that has fishable ice that doesn't have plowed roads and wheelhouses all the way across it. Like they're everywhere. They're everywhere. And so um, Lake of the Woods is one place they can go for a week and actually go home with something and eat something or whatever, you know. And But right. it's, oh man, like there's a lot of money to be made out there, but it's at a cost for the resources, you know, like it's, um, I, I used to think that that part of the lake really couldn't see the effects of angling pressure. And, uh, I realized how wrong I was about that. Like there's definitely, you can see the lake changing down there. You know, when you go down there in the summer and you're only catching, 25 to 30 inches or eight to 12 inches and nothing in between. You're like, yeah. something's, something's not right here. You know, it needs help. And it, and I think one of the, you know, it just, it's just my, my view on it, I guess I've seen, I've seen the fishing and I know the lake goes through cycles. There's, you know, there's cycles it runs through, but something needs some attention drawn to that. And the, the other side of it is like, those guys are not spending one dollar in Lake of the Woods County, besides the ice road pass. So they're and they're depleting our resources, and there's just not not much money being left here in the county. And and uh, I mean, there's there's money going in the pockets of guys running some fouses and stuff, but in the end, it's like pretty soon we're not going to be able to. I don't know. It's you know, yeah. when I started working for Red Fox, we had 16 fish houses and I we'd get south of Flag Island and every fish house you'd see out the window of the bomber was a Red Fox house. See, there were 16 houses out there. There was nobody else. And now we got, like I said, we got 40 houses. Now there's locals with houses out there. There's guys coming all the way up. And I've seen it. We used to catch, have the houses catching 100 fish a day all the time. Nice walleyes, 100 fish a day like December, all of December and most of January. And we just don't see those hundred fish days anymore. The quality is still great, but the numbers just aren't the same. And I know it's because maybe the same amount of fish divvied up amongst more anglers is kind of what some guys say, but. Um, yeah. Well, you mentioned uh, not a dollar spent in Lake of the Woods County other than the ice road pass. Picture this being on the Canadian side of it. How many boats cross that every day? Not a yeah. dollar spent other than a single day license. Yeah. And yeah, when no, I get it. full depletion. I will say like at the angle, the type of clientele we get at the angle aren't really here to go home with a cooler full of fish. Most of them, you know, they're right. like, they're here to have a shore lunch, you know, maybe bring home a couple, but there's a lot more guys here that have a conservation mindset than there is in other places, you know, it's the angle isn't really a commercialized or advertised place. And, and so you get guys that are really seeking out something specific to end up here. And usually it's the type of guys that are real fishermen, real anglers and outdoorsmen. They understand it, but I do get, I mean, I'm not saying you're, what you're saying isn't true. I mean, what you're saying is true. I get it. And it's, <laughs> 
but yeah, it um, is what it is did you know they dropped um they changed their walleye regs on this side this year yeah and there's a slot now too yeah none over 17 so but i but so our limits so non-residents are still the same though still two and two in possession yeah, two and, no, or two is it two a, daily four in possession yeah and still uh but now they're both under 17. So that's the difference there. I know any fisherman on the Minnesota side that has been fishing the lake since before they introduced the slot size will say that that slot limit did good things for the lake. I think any any fisherman who has, you know, fished fished it before and after agrees that was a good thing. So what can you put in your bucket on the US side for walleyes? Um, so 19 and a half to 28 has to go back nice. and you can keep four, four daily foreign possession. Okay. So, okay. um, the way that it's set up, like you can keep six combination of walleye and sauger. You can keep six, but no more than four can be walleye. So you could have six saugers if you want. No walleyes. Oh, sog dogs. Saugers <laughs> head to tail across the pail, baby. Let's eat it. <laughs> that's the measurement how how long is that 12 inches yeah that's 12 <laughs> that's pretty much what they are you know I, I you see like a 15 inch sauger you're like damn mount it get the cheeks <laughs> on that you know <laughs> oh yeah they start getting the old dairy cow spots on them once they breach that 13 14 inch mark <laughs> this camo <laughs> uh, and they always just clench down like like they're just you know, pissed off. Oh yeah. You could tell their attitude like on the graph, they go flying. <laughs> you always catch them without meat on your spoon. <laughs> if the walleyes were aggressive as the saugers, there would not be a walleye left. In the no. <laughs> Sauger would be the target. <laughs> They're like a <laughs> rocket. And it's funny. Cause I'm, like, I just see them come in and hammer it and guy will be like, Oh, Oh, Oh. And I'm like, it's a sauger. It's def Did you see that thing? Just come. Sh you didn't even mark it on the Vexy. Like they hit so hard. <laughs> <laughs> but how many how many guys are running scopes now all of them oh man it's getting to be more and more yeah and then you get guys like hey i think the shack needs to be 30 feet that way and you're like, oh. <laughs> why don't you get your bratwurst eating ass out there <laughs> i just drilled through 32 feet of ice you know like <laughs> and now you wanted yeah yeah that's or, or the other one is like, could we get another hole for the live scope right here in the middle? And it's like, oh my gosh, you know, it's That's not a big deal floor, this time sir. of year. <laughs> yeah, not a big deal this time of year, but like in March when the when the ice is forty inches thick or whatever, it's like, okay, well then we're gonna have to slush all the holes again, and I'm gonna have to shovel out the trough. And but fine, yeah, it's whatever. I got nothing else to do, I guess. <laughs> I actually but yeah, like, that's that's one of my favorites. I think we should be 30 feet that way. I keep seeing fish go by over there. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> see it there. <laughs> I will say when it came out was like at the tail end of when a ice fish guided pretty hard and it like I checked my damn step counter at the end of the day and it was just out of control on the crappies. Because you could just <laughs> see them and it was like, ah, oh, I'm not doing my job if I don't drag my ass over there and it's march so it's, the ice is so thick you go over there catch them for three seconds and they just move again and i'm like yeah. i was like no <laughs> we caught them before they'll come around <laughs> oh yeah I mean, we've chased around big fish before too and you're trying to get in front of it and uh it's funny but th that is uh and then you're like when the ice is thick, you got the pole. So you're like running along with like the pole, <laughs> transducer pole above your head and like, you know, <laughs> tripping over the cord. Yeah. There's shuttles and like all the batteries have to be bigger now. Cause all the graphs are bigger. <laughs> the shuttles are like, dude, you're like kettlebell swinging. Guys, the amount of stuff these guys are bringing too, like, like, so there was one time I got four guys. I'm, and they got, they, set eight buckets, eight empty buckets in the rack of the bomber. And I'm like, what, what in the hell do you need all these buckets for? Like, there's no way you need all these buckets. Well, they, we set our rods on them. I'm like, what? <laughs> <laughs> you brought eight buckets, 
empty buckets just to say, you know, we got, I got this friggin' tower of buckets in front of me. Like my headlights on the bomber are just shining on it. I'm like, come on guys, like set it <laughs> on the floor or something like, or hold it with your hand. Maybe Oh, there's yeah. some guys, they got the auto jiggers and you step into the house, all four guys backs are to their rods and their rods are just like, rrr, 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 yeah. and nobody's looking, you know? <laughs> yeah. I got all this extra time with my hands now to sit yeah. <laughs> playing cards <laughs> nobody's looked at their rods like reel them all oh, up man. no minnows no bait on anything no no <laughs> wonder they're not fighting yeah people look like look at me when i go to take them out and i'll have i only use two like i only ever have two rods with me a 38 inch <laughs> wicked medium and a 38 inch medium light one i just replaced the jig with a clack shot now this is a drop shot with a rattle and a hook. And the other one's just a rattle spoon. And no matter what, like the, there's, you're not going to find some magic color, or like crazy oh, combination. Maybe if you're on Lake Winnipeg, you mix a rip and wrap in there or whatever, but it's just like, that's what you need. Like the, and like, we're, you're going to catch more, the less shit you have. Cause totally. you're going to be able to actually move, not set up yeah. shop and like, and you're not spending all day tying jigs on like, Quit washing all your lures. Just keep one down there for five minutes, maybe. The best part is the when they have like an oversized snap. <laughs> so they just don't catch anything on any of the baits. It's like the one thing that matters. And it's got the <laughs> swivel too. Oh <laughs> yeah, the full full Danielson. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, at least at least the guys that come to the angle bring bring some of their own stuff. Even though sometimes I wish they wouldn't, but like on the South shore, we had to have the jigging sticks, like, you know, a four man house. We'd have to have eight jigging sticks in the house. And then we'd put a blue electrical box on the wall with a bunch of like three eighths ounce jigs in it. And, um, you know, I try and explain everybody what you do, you know, because they see a rod with just two pegs on it and the line, and you wouldn't believe how many times I walk in and they're trying to reel up a fish, like wrapping the line around the pegs. And I'm like, no, you just freaking set the hook, throw the rod, pull the line, you know? And it's like, uh, oh, wow, yeah, I didn't even think about that. It's like, I'm sorry, I should have told you. But <laughs> Yeah, that's why you have a guide. You can get all this tangle out for you. <laughs> it's a yard sale at everywhere, minus 20. 30-pound mono that's been on that rod for the last 10 years. It's like this, like all the way up, you know? <laughs> the, the kinks don't come out of it. <laughs> Man. <laughs> On uh, Lake of the Ozarks a couple months ago, was, like lots of people down south have just set lines, just permanent on their dock for catfish. <laughs> and like, they'll be, you know, usually like on the deck or whatever, and the rods will be soaking for cat daddies and they'll have like alarm systems and stuff. Well, I went by this <laughs> dock. It didn't look like anyone had been there in like a month. Like, you know, it's like not tourist season. There's no lights on. No one was around. There's no sign of humans. All the jigging sticks were down. They've probably been soaking for a month. And when I pulled up to it, there must have been a, like a fish staring at it. And like, you know, just my presence made it like, you know, react. So it bit. So this rod's going in bonkers in front of me. Like I made a video on my phone. I was just dying. I haven't shared it yet because I don't know the legalities. But um, so this cherry woods just corked over into the lake. <laughs> And I'm, I go a couple docks down. I was like, I can't just leave a fish on it for like ever. Like no one's coming. I'm just like, yeah, I probably wouldn't want to be hooked for two years. <laughs> like whenever they come back, July, 4th of July, the following year. <laughs> so I double back. I was like, I'm going to get this catfish off. Like obviously it was a catfish. So I grabbed the line. I was like, yeah, it's like a two pound catfish. I just go to lift it in. The line just explodes. Like <laughs> cannot bear a two pound catfish being swan. <laughs> so I just, I just threw their line on the dock and this fish just swims away with rusty old mono and it's mouth and probably a rusty ass jig. <laughs> He's probably, he probably like, like a month before, but just started swimming when I pulled up, to be honest. I figured maybe like as soon as you put your hand on the line, somebody's like, Hey, Hey, that's mine. That's mine. You know, <laughs> like, sorry. No. <laughs> I was a, like, I'm pretty cautious in the South. Like everyone's got a gun. I don't, oh, yeah. you know, and looking for reasons to use them. And I'm like, no, um, I made good and sure. <laughs> uh, oh, there, yeah, no. there's, 
there's so many things that like I used to notice I used to notice things that would happen and and like now I've been doing it long enough and I've seen some things happen so many times like it doesn't even phase me anymore but one thing one thing guys will do is like they they think they're being sneaky they'll leave a line down can we come back to this shack tomorrow and I'm like yeah sure and then they, they leave a line down and uh you know, I so then I step into the shack the next morning. And I'm like, "Oh, you forgot to reel that one up." Oh no, I wanted to see if I could get a pout. And I'm like, "That's a terrible idea. Like, don't just leave your line down. What are you doing?" And sure as shit, there's a pout on it. I'm like, <laughs> "Now, now they're going to be doing that every time." <sighs> yeah, it's going to give them a leg up in the tonnage tournament, though, to talk about it. Jerry's after. They didn't specify. They didn't specify what species. They just said big fish. <laughs> yeah, powder <Pout'll> doer. <laughs> yeah. What uh, What the hell happened in the game of inches? <sighs> With pout, you mean, or what? No, in general. Just everything. I'm watching you like a hawk. Oh man. You know we haven't talked about like, this on here yet. Yeah, I, I guess I guess like we have. For some reason, I feel like we did, but yeah, it it, it was. Um, it was awesome to do, and uh, we kind of had a couple of tough breaks. The conditions at that time were just the the most grueling conditions that you could have on Lake of the Woods. The slush was – it was bottomless, man. And it was from one end of the lake to the other. It wasn't pockets. It was everywhere. And um, it was insane. Like uh, – like this, that five fit. We had a couple of 550 fans that would burn through a tank of gas in like 60. They were going about half as far as they normally would because they're just yeah, the whole way. as far as they normally would is about half as far as a four stroke or liquid cooled <laughs> two. So you're getting a quarter, quarter mileage. <laughs> oh, it was insane, man. It was, and, um, and there's, there's kind of a time where like, there's obviously a, a great spring late late ice bite, but it's it doesn't happen until after a lot of that water drops through the ice, you know, yeah. and um, and then right before that happens, it seems to me is like one of the toughest times of the whole winter as far as getting fish to bite. And it just so happened we were at that time and like even just less than just a few days before I had run around the lake and like um, – did all right. I could tell that, you know, it was getting near that time, but there was like, for example, I, I went down South to look for a big walleye and they were down in, in the mud out there and, you know, connected with a few nice ones. So then like whatever it was day three of, of the game of inches, that's kind of was our game plan. And we go down South of garden and like spot one, nothing like didn't mark anything. And, and it just continued like that for all day. Like it was four o'clock and I don't know if I had marked a fish. It was, and obviously we needed to do something different and we kind of bailed out back to the angle pretty much like throwing in the towel, you know, like it was like, we're, um, we're both almost out of gas. We've gone through auger batteries. I'm soaked and my helmet fell apart that day and it was just like nothing was going for us. And we ended up catching a nice walleye, but yeah, everything was, everything was tough, man. Like we just had, a, uh, we were planning on traveling. We were actually going to go out over to Schwamigan Bay for, um, for like the stock trout. We were hoping on like a nice pout, some white fish over there. Then there was a blizzard over like around Duluth and stuff that, and then not to mention, um we didn't really have a great way to transport all our gear had a kind of a plan for that that fell apart and um it was tough because we kind of knew right from the get-go we weren't going to be contenders because we knew we we knew we were going to have one hell of a time trying to find a stock trout in lake of the woods <laughs> yeah, <that's laughs> a long hard road <laughs> so so I mean, like we kind of knew that it, we we didn't stand much of a chance, and it's tough to like fish that time of year, twelve hours a day, five days straight, knowing the entire time that Clayton's going to beat you. 
and uh, and uh, you would uh, the woods. You would have needed every single thing to fire just to compete with everyone else's moderate. Well, and you Except know, like, for, like the guy out uh, in Quebec or whatever, like they didn't. Yeah. Have well, and there's been a lot of not just one year, but there's been quite a few years where like that same week, because it was like third week of March. Like there's yeah. been a lot of times where that is a, like, you can go around Lake of the Woods and like smash everything. And like, uh, it, we just weren't there yet. The conditions just weren't in our favor. And um, we still caught some superstar fish. I thought we did well. The thing, yeah. the not being able to catch a pout was like a real kick in the nuts. I don't know what the heck happened there. We just could not connect with that and um same with the white fish like i know the the white fish in shoal lake or wherever like just not like they used to be and um but still usually when i go there we can pluck one and usually it's a nice one or something and and that didn't work out and even like the lake trout just a lot of it was tough but you know we had a good time um it was fun to watch it was fun we had fun you know I think Dave and I were kind of at our at each other's throats by the end of it. I think we quit early on the last day and like we 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 work together well, but um we do have different methods for some things. Like it, I I think one of the things I like to do is I I like to get to a spot where I know is a big fish location or where is it just a prime location and I like to set up there and give that specific spot like an hour. Like I want to sit right here where I've caught trophy fish many times before for an hour. And I'm just going to wait for them to come to me. Dave's method is more like I'm going to fish this hole for five minutes and then I'm going to go to the next one and the next one. And, and so he was, I think he was kind of frustrated that I was maybe not drilling enough holes and like not moving enough. And, at the end of it, like we both had the same tally, you know, like it, neither one was working, so it didn't matter. But, um, <laughs> you know, all right, man, don't get so damn sad. <laughs> I just want to get into some stories, not twist the knife on it. <laughs> it was tough, man. That was tough. We, we knew, we know that we could like be con- on Lake of the Woods. Even. Obviously, we're, we would have had to go other places for a couple of those things, but like we know that we could like put out some good numbers right here and we yeah. have many times and um and it just wasn't working in our favor and the wheels fell off the bus or whatever i don't know and... <laughs> okay you don't have to get so bummed about it <laughs> we'll move on <laughs> uh... you were just kind of like yeah i just said to ask it because you were like you know you guys were our guys L- lake of the woods and we let you down in the race. And we let you down they turn the horse into dog food. <laughs> now I'm just twisting the knife. I'm just doing a dick. It's fine. Twist it. I'm, I'm already down. That's a lot of ice fishing. That's probably more it's hours of ice fish all year. I just pick the primo times now. And Not to mention, like, I had already been grinding all year. Like, that yeah. was, it was... It was a tough one. And then... That's what I was thinking like for this year, like with how busy we are, if the fishing is tough, I'm, I'm a missing person's like, I'm disappearing. I'm going to go live it out in the Al- Alanu. Like uh, nobody's going to know what happened to me. I'm just going to not show up one day and. You're just going to kick the door in on someone's trapper's cabin and live <laughs> off squirrels and out. It's either that, or I'm going to get one guy like, Hey guys, how's it going? And he's going to be like, horse shit. And I'm going to be like, <laughs> Like just, <laughs> just I'm gonna just go off like, ah! like <laughs> and then I'm gonna spend the rest of my life in prison. So I might as well just walk out into the woods. <laughs> so like your breaks are just freeze up and ice out. That's that's it, right? We call it like the March meltdown. Like there's <laughs> the March meltdown. It's like there's stuff that happens in March that it could happen 10 times in one day in December and you just, bah, you laugh it off, but all it just takes one thing in March and just, boom, and it's like, 
Sometimes it happens in February. I've had it happen like second week of February before. That's February tough... freak out. Yeah, February freak out, March meltdown. If it, yeah, like if, and it's happened, anybody that's worked on the ice long enough has had it. Like it's, I had it a couple of years ago and I just like, I lost it one day. And at the end of the day, I come back and we're cleaning fish. I'm like, I'm sorry, guys. Like I, I know I was being a dickhead. Like, I'm sorry. And they're like, we know, we know. Just, you know, cut us some slack when we do it next year. And it's like, all right. <laughs> <laughs> but Oh, man. Yeah, I couldn't imagine that every day. That's a that's a freaking grind. At least now the days are short. But you could yeah. like if you're on a heavy fish clean in March, like you ain't going to bed till eleven o'clock, probably Dude. up at five. Man, and that that evening bite is so key too. Like oh, yeah. especially around the angle. I don't know. I'm sure it's like that everywhere, but it gets to the point you're just like, I'm sorry, but like we can't, I can't do it. I can't stay out here until like nine o'clock. That's insane. And of course these guys are just happy as hell to, yeah, we come this time of year cause we get more for our money. And I'm like, Oh God. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> but, yeah, yeah. A few years ago, we just started calling our days eight hours. Like yeah. me and Bennett, like made, or like they're eight hour days on the ice. Cause March was just like insane. By the yeah. time you put all your, like that was back in the gas auger days too. Like you, Man, people don't understand. And I just gave away all my gas augers and gas auger parts. Like I had a full graveyard, ripping recoils out, bending oh. flights, dropping blades. Like, and that was mostly like that was mostly like portable fishing, right? So, all port, yeah, yeah. Imagine, imagine drilling twelve holes in a six-man house through forty inches of forty inches of ice with like the old Jiffy Model Thirty. <laughs> and you're like you're like it's so thick in there and the, i used to work with a guy he actually got a note from his doctor that and he called it auger lung like because the oh, smoke man. and the two stroke and it was like from drilling holes and then not only that your ears are ringing because it's just the thing is just screaming you know you got two extensions on it and oh ugh. my god yeah i never even considered that Cause like we just had little four hole houses and it was like, get in, get out. Six yeah, man houses, dude. And then, and then you got a five gallon bucket of slush out of each hole. So you're hauling whatever, you know, 12, five gallon buckets out of the house, dumping it. And it's like, and not, it's the, the permanent houses are crazy. Cause like, yeah, when there's 40 inches of ice, you drill the holes, then you got a shovel you got to shovel all that slush out. Now you can't even see where the holes are and you got to scoop it all. And it's like, and then you come back and check on them. How's it going guys? Horse shit. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I just drilled through 32 feet of ice. You don't get it. What auger are you using now? Um, well, like we, well, we got the propanes. We ran the propanes for a long time. Those are those were good. They're heavy though, and and um, I brought my own Strike Master forty volt out a few years ago, and ever since I brought that out, we haven't really had a year with like a ton of ice, right? You know, um, but those cut fast. The only thing is they don't reopen the holes. The Strike Master, that uh, what do they call it? Like the shaver yeah, blade or whatever. The chippers you need to reopen, hey? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So. And then the other side of that is like the strike master flighting is, is it like a little smaller than the jiffies or something? Maybe. I, don't know. I, think, I think the like, light, do you have the light flight? That's a true eight. I think, I think it's eight even. I don't know. What's this? Look at this. Here's my. <laughs> That's steely Dan. I can see it in your back. Let's do what? That's a Steely Dan. Oh, this one. Yeah. Oh, you're talking the light flight, like the plastic jobby. Yeah. Oh, man. Plastic? I don't know. I'm telling I'm, you. I'm hard on equipment. You know that. You I'm know that. I'm hard on equipment also. That's why the plastic's better, because it doesn't bend. <laughs> or like it doesn't stay bent. 
It's a sweet I rig. I, I kind of rack. I kind of uh, wrap wrap that thing around trees when I'm going through the avenue sometimes, and I feel like the plastic would be just a it, just a shaft by the time we got there. <laughs> but this one's pretty good. I've definitely bent a couple on trees, but it's um, I don't know. Like you say, I it's tough to beat. I I have considered getting the twenty four volt Strike Master just because with live scope now you just don't drill that many holes. Yeah, it's it's just as fast. Like actually, it's a little bit faster than the forty volt. Um, they're they're just smaller batteries, so you got to carry a couple. But I, I that's what I used the other day. I was heading. It had snowed on Saturday and I was like, oh, I don't feel like loading up my sled and everything. I went and checked the ice on the river. I'm like, okay, there's six inches. Like I can r run my sled out here. And I was like, I'm not loading it up. And I just drove it on the roads the whole way because it, it was a Saturday. So no one plowed. So I just went full, like, yeah, just full breach down the roads on my sled and I'm cooking along and uh, I just pulled the auger out, used it once never check the bolt oh yeah so <laughs> i've done this a couple of times now you got to check your bolt no matter what brand you're running um so I, I got the digger mount on the front of the sled and it popped off caught the back of the track then the shack <laughs> ran it over and it just went yard sailing in the air <laughs> battery separated auger just goes rolling down the damn middle of the road so I do the big wide turn because my skis aren't catching because I'm on a road. Yeah, because there's sparks flying off them. Yeah, turn around, <laughs> big wide lap, busting through willows in the ditch. And uh, yeah, I get back and just whatever, picked up the shrapnel and put her together and stuck a sleigh pin in her. And that was my rig. <laughs> so they're tough at least. <laughs> So it's it's funny because um, actually I should look at my phone. Like I wonder where Alex is. Hey, he might be in trouble. One sec. He um, <clears throat> Alex Alex got here uh, a few days ago and his went out and uh, set up his shack and flighting came off came out of the drill. He had the drill one, the K drill or whatever it was. Down she yeah. went. Yeah, he got like one hole done and he had already lost it. He didn't have like the pool noodle on it, like they come with. No, I don't know what he had, but it no, it sank. And so I went and got a magnet, and and um, I don't know. We were, I we could feel. There was a couple times I had it, but I think the mud was too soft and it just wouldn't come up. But I, I don't know. I didn't. I don't know where the steel is on that thing. Like, is it just one steel chunk where you the aug or the drill? I think goes it's probably just the, just the blades. I don't know, but we couldn't get it. We couldn't get it. Weird that a magnet wouldn't pick up uh, composite. <laughs> I could feel it. I could. I kept on feeling it. But where's he at, anyways? I got no messages from him. He's got a pretty sweet setup now. So this is the first time he's used it. I think it's a core core brand. We it's a wheelhouse, but you the wheels come all the way up and it slides on skids oh and it's pretty nice so yeah so um that's what he's been using the last few days and, and it's uh it's got the ramp door in the back so you can like pull a side by side right in it man yeah it's it's a really um really sweet setup i thought um is he doing videos up there or just pissing around yeah, well, a little bit of both, I guess. I don't know. I I was kind of thinking I'd be able to fish with him, and then now, like today, I ended up um, not having enough time to hang out with him. I know he really uh, he really smacked him last night. I don't know if he's going to do a video or not, but um, he had a hell of a time last night, and I think they did all right tonight. Um, the bite definitely wasn't as good tonight as it was last night, but last time I talked to him, he had, uh, or at least when he was fishing, he had caught like 30 fish or something like that. And like, that's a yeah. it. He goes, look at this is, this is classic. Where is he here? He says like, oh yeah, a lot of, a lot of little ones. And I, like, that's what I say. Like all guys, oh, a lot of little ones. How's everybody else doing? <laughs> horse shit. Yeah. Horse shit. <laughs> 
But um, yeah, I don't know. Like, what can you? That's a that was like a little one. Yeah, that's a little walleye, all right. Yeah, eater. Little one. Actually, that's, that's a sogger. Sog dog. Sog dog. See the spots. Let's see. Where oh, is it? she's a sneaker. <laughs> that one would have snuck into the creel. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah. That's all I want to keep now is saugers and perch. You get a real walleye. It's like, oh, you can go back. <laughs> uh, it's funny because guys are always trying to tell if it's a sauger or a walleye based on the white spot on the tail. And I'm like, no, you the dorsal fin, spots or no spots. Like that's what you gotta go by because the white spot is not definitive enough. I guess you guys actually have to identify them because they're you get a bigger sog dog limit. Well, so yeah, so then when you clean them, you gotta leave the spine attached to the fillets. So, like the way I do it is I, I take that first cut, but I don't go all the way through at the tail. I leave it attached right at the tail. Then you take the ribs out. So when you're done, you have like your fillets. And then the spine with the dorsal. So then you got to pack that up for them to go home with. And they just pull it out of the freezer and right into the garbage. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I hope not. No, I'm, just, <laughs> I'm still charging them two bucks for it. I don't care, I guess. <laughs> I did the math uh, while we were sitting here. If it's two bucks a fish, I can make 240 bucks an hour cleaning fish down there if you can maintain the pace 27 seconds plus bucket transfer how many beers can know. you drink how many beers can you drink while you're doing that though because that's what's really important yeah i'd need like a helmet <laughs> <laughs> i uh zero i think my record is on the way back from garden island to the bomber there was one time i had eight eight beers on the way back it's like 40 minutes or something but I'm driving the bomber at the same time. It was probably a blizzard, and who knows how many I had all day before that. <laughs> What's the statute of limitations on DUI? <laughs> Twelve hours. <laughs> I don't know. It's a bomber, though. Like, come on, cut me yeah. some slack here, dude. You can get a DUI on. Well, in Canada, the law reads um, anything that's not so, some variation of this, but anything that's not uh manually powered so a sailboat you can get a dui on i know i do know a guy that has gotten a dui in a bomber poor i guess so <laughs> yeah it's the same as any other motor vehicle <laughs> i don't know man because even when you're sober those things aren't driving straight how do they know when you're drunk or not that's the thing yeah. you just gotta have your headlights on and you're not gonna get stopped <laughs> <laughs> so we're gonna cut this off now before you end up in damn <laughs> angle, Lake of the Woods County. Actually, it's last time I came, sure. last time I was coming back through there, I did the call to check in. They're like, "Where are you coming from?" And I didn't want to say Jerry, so I was just like, uh, "Lake of the Woods County." The guy's <laughs> like, "Is that prison?" <laughs> <laughs> kind of. It's a type of prison. I was like, "No, it's hamburgers." <laughs> Jerry Jr. Oh. Oh, yeah. All right, bud. Um, well, sorry. I couldn't get Alex to show up. I Hopefully, he's okay. Yeah, you better go check on your buddy. I was Seriously. actually texting you the other day. because I figured you'd be down right now. Like I figured this was kind of your down season until everyone was driving, so I was going to see if you want to go fishing, but she's full breach. It's on, man. It's on. <laughs> well, let me know when you come up to Soon Arrows on the trout tour. Yes. I'm going to join in on that this year. You can Gosh, park the I bus not in wait. Place or whatever. I we cannot wait. Period. I I look forward to that to that those that time of the year. Like it's the only thing that keeps me sane. <laughs> All right. Well, try to keep your head on your shoulders this winter. <laughs> Might need to send you like a stress ball or something when you're doing check. <laughs> yeah, I'll just use like a like a sogger. <laughs> All right, Thanks, man. Dude. Good talk. Always good to talk to you. Thanks for your time. Good luck. Uh, good luck on the ice. We'll chat soon. We'll see you out there. See you, bud. Thanks. What do we do now? Uh, end recording.